Hi, I'm Nick from the Red Dog Company. Today I'm talking leads. We make a variety of leads, both clip and slip. I'm often asked why one would use a slip lead, so we'll start with that. A slip lead is simply a running noose with a handle at the end. It's the lead of choice for many working dogs and also great for other applications. Due to the risk of getting caught up, dogs involved in activities ranging from sporting purposes to rescue work are exempted from the requirement to wear a collar in a public place. So for them, the choice is pretty straightforward. However, there are many other reasons to choose a slip lead. Unlike a collar, which can be pulled over the dog's head if not fitted correctly, the slip lead adjusts to any size when under load. It's easy to put on and take off, even if the dog is moving around. There are also less potential points of failure, as it doesn't rely on the integrity of the collar, D-ring and clip. What it won't do is stop your dog pulling. At best, it may slightly help being uncomfortable for the dog when it's straining against you. At the other end of the spectrum is the harness, which I would only ever use if I'm actively encouraging the dog to pull, canny cross or sledding, for example. There's no avoiding it. Unless you're very lucky, walking at heel requires a bit of training. Whatever method you're comfortable with and persist until your dog walks at heel with a slack lead. The lead is there as an essential safety net in traffic, in the event of a startling noise or that irresistible squirrel. It's not there to hold your dog in place. If you're right-handed, carrying a gun, your dog walks on your left and vice versa. Everyone else can do what they fancy. The main thing is to decide and then be consistent. Slip the lead over the dog's head so that the loop is self-opening when slack and then adjust the stopper so the loop can't open up enough to get over the dog's head. It's easy to put the lead on the wrong way around, in which case it won't really work properly. If the dog is on your left, form the number nine with the loop at the top and pass over the dog's head. If the dog is on your right, form the letter P. It's a case of a picture being worth a thousand words. Once you've done it a couple of times, it'll become second nature. The truth is you don't really need a Red Dog Company slip lead, a lead that's handmade by a master rigger in his workshop on the shores of the Solent. You don't need a lead that's made from Technora or Kevlar blend rope and that has its core carefully removed to improve pocketability. Hopefully you don't also need a lead to be tested to 500 kilos braking strain. But if you don't lose your leads and you like nice things, why not? We do two lengths of slip lead. The standard slip lead's useful length is 120 centimetres and it's suitable for most applications where the dog's under control and at your side. The extra long slip lead's useful length is about 150 centimetres. I use an extra long when the dog's going to be on the lead for an extended period of time, such as waiting to compete at a field trial, so the dog has the freedom to lie down, sniff or move about a bit while still being ultimately connected to me. Another application for the extra long slip is when walking two dogs, because the outside dog will be further away from you. A Jaeger lead is a German hunting lead that has many useful applications. It's worn over the shoulder as a hands-free lead, so you can have a walking stick in one hand and control your gun with the other. It's also useful when carrying the shopping or exercising. The Jaeger lead can also be used as a brace lead for two dogs or as a long line or tie-out. All of our leads are also available with traditionally cast brass trigger hooks for those who prefer a clip lead. As always, don't take my word for it, check out our lead reviews.